Hey, what's up? It's Justin from the Expert Business Blueprint. Just kicking it here in my garden. It's December the 3rd, and it's absolutely beautiful here in Cyprus. What I wanna to talk to you about today is what I think is the number one reason most coaches feel overwhelmed, burned out, suffering from information overload, working all hours of the day in their business, so if you're somebody that's, that's trading time for dollars, if you're getting up early in the morning, working with clients till late at night, feel like you're doing everything yourself, and if it just feels like your business is like a house of cards that is ready to crumble on top of you, this is for you. And I know because I've been there, and I can tell you categorically, undeniably, the number one thing that is keeping you in that position is what I call your identity. So what I mean by that is there are different ways of making money and um, there is something known as the cash flow quadrant. And this was designed by a guy called Rob Kiyosaki uh, who wrote the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's a great book, you should, you should check it out. And in that book, he outlines the four ways you can make money. You can be an employee, you can be a self-employed solopreneur, you can be a business owner, or you can be an investor. Now, whilst Rob Kiyosaki talks a lot about the technicalities of those roles and how to make money in those different ways, what I started focusing on years ago was why do we adopt a certain identity? Why are many, many coaches stuck at that solopreneur, self-employed level doing all the jobs themselves when at the same time there are other entrepreneur coaches who own a real business that have teams working for them that can scale up that reach more people and have a much different quality of life they have a much more freedom based lifestyle so the number one problem i see is that if you're struggling with those problems we talked about it feels like it's a job to you and everything is stacking up on top of you and you don't know how to scale up to the next level it's because you're holding on to the identity of a solopreneur, or in other words, self-employed. Now, here's the thing about that. Self-employed means that you're employed. So the solopreneur still has an employee mentality, and that is very powerful because that label you put on yourself it drives your decisions, it drives your actions, it drives your biases, it determines what your goals are. Here's an example of that. If I asked you right now, what are your uh, revenue goals? And let's say you say, I wanna, I wanna go from making $10,000 a month and I wanna make $30,000 a month. Well, let me ask you this. Did you make that decision, did you create that goal strategically based on logic and future projections. Is that, is that goal what your company could make? Or is it based on what you think you can make in the time you have to make it based on what you think you can charge? And that's an important question for a lot of people. Sorry, just a plane going overhead. Live close to the airport right here. So that's the thing. The, the solopreneur is driven by ego. It's driven by a perception of self-worth. Okay, I'll say that again. The ego, the solopreneur is driven by ego. Not a bad thing, it's just the perception of self-worth. So the solopreneur mentality coach is going to set their prices, set their goals, based on if they think they can charge more than somebody else or less than somebody else. There's no real long-term business planning there. It's just all based on comparison and ego. So the entrepreneur, on the other hand, the entrepreneur is driven by a different factor. If the solopreneur is driven by ego and what they're worth and what they can get, the entrepreneur or the real business owner is driven by vision. They're driven by having a bigger vision than themselves. They're driven by making a bigger impact. They're driven more by contributing than they are from getting a paycheck month to month. 
And that really says it all. Think about the solopreneur identity. It's an employee mentality, which means you're chasing a paycheck. You're only focused more on, can I pay the bills this month? Can I cover my costs? Can I put some money aside? Can I get by? And what that leads to is, you don't really treat your team members with as much respect. You don't really lead people. You just have people. So the problem is then with that, that you're not really building a company. You're not building a real business around yourself. You're just working a job and you're trying to find people just to support you and, and partner with you, if anything. If you wanna build a real company with a real team culture, with a team that are loyal and supportive and driven to help you, you've gotta have a bigger vision. That's when you make the mark to jump to be an entrepreneur, when vision becomes more important than your ego and perception of self-worth. Now I know this is, a, this is a tough pill for a lot of people to swallow, but, but really look at your actions and your results right now and your mindset and you'll see this is the thing. So basically you need to get from solopreneur driven by ego and that get, out, get out of that scarcity mindset of how do we pay the bills to thinking like an entrepreneur who's building something big with a big vision that wants to lead people towards it and build a real company. How do we do that? Well, you're probably not very far away. Most solopreneurs I meet who are doing 10,000 a month, 20,000, 30,000 a month even, they're very, very close to this. They're thinking of packing it all in because they're so stressed and overwhelmed and, and this, this job has consumed their life, but they're just two millimeters away from making a big change. And that's the good news. Because you at this point, if you are doing that, if you're making five, 10, 15, 20, 100 grand a month, it means that you've validated your signature process. You have a process or a methodology that gets results for people, right? You help them lose weight or transform their body or grow their business or find a perfect partner or help them teach their parrot to talk. It doesn't matter, right? But the fact is you've, you've come up with a system that helps people and it gets results. And we know that because you're making the income that you make. Customers are attracted to you. You're just concerned about how do we keep that momentum growing and how do you grow without burying yourself in the process or without burning out, right? So the first important thing to look at is that you've got a system that works. The entrepreneur looks at that system and says, this is the value. It's not me. My time for money is not the value. The value is in this system, this methodology for getting results. And at this point, you can either get that system packaged up onto a scalable course or package online that can be sold to hundreds of thousands of people, or you can start recruiting a team that can deliver that system for you to the customers. Or it could be a combination of both. But that's the difference. So when you start getting real confidence in what you offer, and you know that it could be systemized, it could be productized, and it can be duplicated and taught by other people, or it can be taught online, then you make the shift to being an entrepreneur. And you realize that you don't have a job, you have a system that helps people, a scalable, system and all you need is the right digital technology or the right team to lead you to greatness to do that and you'll probably need a team either way even if you have an online business you're still going to need a team of two to four people most likely uh, it's a bit of a fallacy that we think with an online business we can still do it all ourselves a business is still a business you're still going to need some help uh, with marketing with sales with admin with payroll with financing with uh, all that stuff. So you're going to be building a small team no matter what, right? And that's the main difference. So if you look at your identity right now, are you thinking and acting more like the solopreneur? Thinking about what can I get? Thinking about ego, thinking about paying the bills, thinking that you are the value? Or are you thinking more like the entrepreneur that has a system for getting results? and you're detaching yourself healthily and saying, this system can help people all around the world. I need to get this out there. And the entrepreneur has two visions actually. The first is a personal vision, and they know that they can help more people 
they can be serving thousands of customers and that brings them more wealth and more freedom. So the entrepreneur first has a personal vision for their life. How do you want to live your life? Who do you want to spend it with? Do you want to be with your kids, your family? How much wealth do you want to be accumulating? Right? That's what you deserve for being an entrepreneur with a system that helps thousands and thousands of people. And that's available to you. So you have a personal vision. And then to achieve that, you create a company vision. What does the company have to do to give you the amount of income, time, and physical mobility to live that ideal vision of your lifestyle? If you want to go backpacking in Thailand for three months of the year, okay, how much money and freedom does your business have to provide for you? What team members would you need for that? Or how many courses or packages would you need to sell? Think about that. So the personal vision and then the company vision. And when you have that and you're driven by that bigger vision, you're looking at the company from a top-down view. You're not then in the business, but you're working on the business. And it becomes less about how many leads and sales can I get today? And instead, being a company owner is about how do I grow my team? Who are my rock star players? Um, how do we make this product and service more scalable and more powerful? How do I also work myself out of the business so that I can work on it rather than in it and let your team serve the customers so you can spend more time doing more of the things that you really want to do, like be with your family, get the intimacy back with your partner, spend time with your young kids, or just travel the world and do those things you always wanted to. That is why you created a business in the first place, for freedom. You built it as an investment vehicle to provide you a lifestyle. You didn't start a business to just replace a job but that's how it's ended up for most coaches and consultants. So I'd love to know what you think about this. Let me know in the comments, which of those, you know, are you a solopreneur right now, identity, or are you thinking more like an entrepreneur? Or can you see how this has affected your results so far? Change that identity and you'll change your actions and you'll change your results. Or are you somebody that used to be the solopreneur like me and you've escaped the time for money trap and now you're more fulfilled, you're growing a team, you're scaling your business, making a bigger impact, and creating more wealth and freedom for your family. Let me know in the comments, I would love to hear that. And that is the number one thing I can hand on heart tell you that is stopping you getting the scale and the impact and the freedom and wealth that you really want. That's how you escape the time for money trap and grow a real business. So this is Justin from the Expert Business Blueprint. I'd love to hear your comments below, and I'll see you again next time.